Hello and welcome back. It has been another week of football and that means there has been another week of fantasy football. Lots of injuries, lots of big plays and lots of players underperforming. But let's get straight into it with our week two matchups in the Andy Dalton fan club. So first up, you had me versus my father or Andrew. Um, very good week for me overall, scoring 150 plus points. Missed out on my potential max score of around 180. The bench strikes again. Um, but with Cooper Cup hurt now, alongside his backup quarterback, Tua, Dad's got to be looking to make some roster moves in the coming weeks. And this is what I'm talking about. Overall, this was a pretty solid game. I scored 152 points, which is a really good score. You're not going to beat that very often. But 116 points is... Normally a winning score, but you've got some high scores, then you've got some low scores here. Obviously, Cooper Cup only managing four points before withdrawing from the game is going to be a bit of a concern. Um, I, I believe he's expected to miss a couple of weeks as well. Um, Kyle Pitts not doing very well in that matchup. But other than that, everyone did kind of perform okay. Maybe you missed a bit of X Factor. If you come down and look at the bench, it's not like he had loads of points stashed away here which kind of leaves you wondering where do you find the extra points you need. You've got Singletree out of a good week, um, but it doesn't do enough. Maybe you bump Adams up into your wide receiver call room and then the flex slot belongs to Singletree, um, but then there's not a lot of depth after that. Um, Thomas as a wiki wide receiver is a good option to have if he keeps progressing, but you're a little bit worried about this right here. I mean, this right here, these three here. Um, is a big concern. Um, I've got some um, bits of business in. I am looking to get rid of Brock Purdy. Um, I'm looking to bring in Pierce for Pittman. Um, I think that's it. Also, I'm looking for a new defence as I am every week. But the big issue for me is trying to work out what I'm doing my rookie wide receivers. Obviously, last week, Worthy had a great week and Harrison did dickle. Um, but this week, complete opposite. Worthy did basically nothing against Bengals, and Harrison had 113 two touchdowns in the first quarter this week. Um, so I need to work that out. But picking Dobbins up last week, huge bit of business from me. He's absolutely balled out. Robinson, although he's yet to score, putting up a bunch of points reliably. Godwin, another good week from him. A little bit worried about my tight end situation. A uh, really good week from Josh Jacobs. While Jordan Love is out hurt, Josh Jacobs has got to be a must starter because they're going to be running the ball a fuck ton. Picked up fair Ben as I normally stream my kickers week to week, and that paid dividends with a massive 23 points. Steelers defense absolutely handled Denver as I expected. Up next, we have Scott versus Skip, and Scott has lost a decently high scoring game, but he will be kicking himself for benching Alvin Kamara when Skip had James Cook and Justin Jefferson. That is huge points on the other side that he would have been able to counter if he'd started Kamara. As you can see here, 112 to 136. A relatively close game, um, but the big kicker is right here. Alvin Kamara sat on his bench with 53 points. Even more so when you consider that Kirk was in his flex slot, who scored 0.05, you, you do a straight swap there, and that's 165 points he scored. Right, that is insanity. Granted, no other mistakes by the looks of it. His bench, I don't think really... Obviously, anyone could have gone into his flex slot and done better. Jamar Chase, only four points, could have upgraded. But they're, they're, that's negligible. Two points, it can win or lose a game, but you're not saying that's a horrific decision. But um, not playing Kareem Hunt after that insane game he had against... The Cowboys has got to sting. I'm sure he was suffering with that one. Um, overall, though, everyone else did pretty well. 30 points to Jalen Hurts, 20 for Stevenson, 15 for Williams, Debo, 13 points before retiring Hurt. Um, Jamar Chase, four points, poor from him. Hunting a contract, Jamar Chase really needs to step it up in the next few weeks. George Kittle, huge, huge performance from George Kittle at tight end. Kirk did not have a good game. Not great from the kicker. Defense did okay. But then over here, Richardson, nothing. But 18 points from Taylor, 35 from Cook, 24 from Jefferson. Ayuk, a little better than Chase, still not great. Paul from the tight end. Uh, but here we go. Charbonnet, 17 points in your flex. 17 points in at the flex is gold dust. 
Uh, Butker, nine points, a, a decent bit better, and then defense a little bit better. He's just, he's basically won just at every position. Um, but this is the big difference maker right here. And like I said, you, if Kamara would have been in, game over. Hopefully, he'll be looking to do better this week against me. Next up, we have Fraser versus Pash. Um, injuries made Fraser's team score a measly 82 points. But with Pash having Saquon Barkley, Mason and Metcalf, you can't help but feel like it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Scoring 136 points to Fraser's 82. You look at his bench, there's not loads there. There is stuff there, but I don't think you're making up a 56-point deficit. But look at this. Dak for us, 19 points is more than serviceable. Saquon, 19 points. Mason, 23. Metcalf, 25. That's really difficult to overcome. It's a lot of lot of points from your big areas. And then when you consider that most at zero, Walker, zero. Engram, zero. Keen Allen, zero on his bench. Like, there's just there wasn't... He needs to um, throw out some of the um, the bath water here and maybe go back to the drawing board because this, for sure, is not it. But even over here, look, there's more points left on um, Pash's bench. 24 for Ridley. 23 for Shahid. Is Dan Jones an upgrade? No, Dan Jones would have been downgrade. Um, insane amount of points waiting to be had here. He could have scored, what, another 20 points there. Another 18 points there. He could have been up in the 160s as well. Absolutely huge week. Um, that I'm sure Pash will be hoping to keep the momentum going. Now that he's got um, his second one of the season, he's 2-0. He is just going to be head down, barreling forward. He wants it all. Next up, we have got the inactive bowl. This happened this week between... Um, Tom and Ryan, um, two in inactive players in the league. They used to play before. They still also draft. Occasionally, they'll look in and accept a trade, but they do basically nothing. And it shows this week. One team starting an injury-reserved Christian McCaffrey, and the other team starting an inactive Jordan Love and an injured-reserved Puka Nakua. And that extra inactive player made all the difference with the scores being 126 to 119. Um, it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious if you just look at this. Um, Malik Neighbors came up huge to get the win here, but it's just what missing your wide receiver and your quarterback is crazy. Missing a running back and a tight end is crazy. Look at these benches. Pup, IR, questionable, questionable insane truly truly insane both of them having less than 40 points on the bench for whatever reason is insane but yeah really really close game here these are guys that normally are a big problem early in the season when their teams are healthy and they're not changing their lineup and they'll have decent teams like christian McCaffrey would have been a problem but because of these injuries coming in some big name players all of a sudden Ryan's looking like a free win. That being said, 119 points would have beat one, two, three, four, five people this week, despite missing a quarterback and a wide receiver. True, true, true insanity. Um, but next up, we've got a big one. To close things out for the Andy Dalton fan club week two matchups, we have got the roommate Ruckus um, as Anchor has fallen to 0-2 while giving James his first win of the year. Two people you'd expect to be fighting for them playoff spots and looking to go all out and win it all. Down the bottom of the pack, Anchor 0-2 to start almost never happens. However, the win didn't come cheap with James Starbacks Mixon and Pacheco both getting hurt with Pacheco being out for six to eight weeks with a broken leg and the report is still out on Mixon. We're not 100% sure quite how bad that is yet. But Anchor, only 85 points. Let's see where it went wrong. Josh Allen only scoring 11 points, I would say, is no anomaly. Brees Hall, 21 points, really good. Gibbs, 15 points, perfectly fine. Wide receiver room. This is this is a common theme we're seeing this year. Wide receivers are struggling. 4.3 Stefan Diggs, not even 10 points for a larvae, and a 44-19 win is diabolical. Laporta, one of the best receiving tight ends in the game, only 1.6. Eckler as a running back, as your flex choice running back, 
someone who was being viewed as almost over the hill to manage to go out there and get 20 point, uh, 12 points. Um, and that's more or near as damn it what our entire wide receiver room managed. You've got to be angry about that. Another huge week for kickers this week. Nine points for Dicker, and that's probably below average this week. Um, and then, of course, the Cowboys' defense was a um, poor pick, it would seem, as they ended up costing her points with their massive blowout loss to the New Orleans Saints. But again, you look down to uh, her bench, and there's not many points left there. She could have upgraded one wide receiver to get an extra four points, but that's it. She could have done better at tight end for another 10 points. So that would have been, what, uh, 14 extra points. And you could have taken Eckler out for Allen for an extra seven points. So she could have made an extra 21 points, which would have capped her out at 105. The big problem came with the, the kickers, uh, the Cowboys defense. Um, James, on the other hand, pretty okay score. Um, got 15 points. It's kind of average for quarterbacks this year, it seems. But uh, Mixon getting seven points for retiring her. That's a concern for the future. Pacheco, the big knock on his season here. 16 points, has looked like dynamite every time he's played. Losing him is going to be a difficult one to replace. Wide receiver room, again, a big concern here. Amon Ross St. Brown, a little bit banged up, likely going to be fine. Evans, only 4.6 points, points. Missed 1,000 yards himself, struggling to get going this year. Definitely a concern. Isaiah Likely, the tight end that was probably at the top of everyone's wish list this wave of priority week, didn't come in. And then Brian Robinson with a huge 20 points in the flex to, um, to save him here. He'll probably be leaning on him pretty heavily in the coming weeks. 15 points from Evan McPherson in what has been two of the highest scoring weeks I've ever seen for kickers is pure insanity and then that browns defense with 18 points just to tie it all over and get it nice and tidy that is week two of the Dalton fan club let's move over to the ghoulie 12 heartbreak for me this week as i lost by only two points to joss costed by advice from luke telling me to start fryer moving instead of gasicki he told me to go against my gut and i did and it cost me um, the double the double rookie play at wide receiver paid off big time for Joss. However, as they netted him a combined fifty seven point seven points, making up well more than half of his total. What an insane week! Um, truly extraordinary stuff you're seeing here. Only losing by two points in what was a relatively low scoring affair. Um, two are getting hurt um, in a horrific injury has made this game a lot closer than it probably should have been. Najee a little bit disappointing for me again. Mike Evans a little bit low. Fry move did okay with eight points. You'd be pretty happy with that tight end. But when you've left 16 on the bench, it's a little bit um, off-putting. I could have got a few more, uh, a little bit more if I'd have paid Rogers. Um, that's about it. I could have played DJ Moore instead of Mike Evans. But like there wasn't a lot, lot more I could do. Um, but there was things I could have done most notably starting Gasicki. Um, but over on this side, two of being injured is probably of concern as he only has Caleb Williams, who's not had the hottest start ever as his backup. Um, Shahid on his bench was probably, kept, again, kept it closer than it should have been. But the look at these rookies. Oh, that is absolutely huge from your rookies. You can get away with your quarterback only scoring five when your rookie's going to combine for 57 points at wide receiver. Insanity. Really, really good week from him. That takes him up to 2-0, and I believe. Oh, no, 1-1, one one, just like me. There we go. We are both 1-1, one and one, so um, let's, let's keep it running. Next up, we have got the Commissioner Josh beating Luke in a very another very, very close win here, uh, of only three points being the difference. However, the win would have been a lot easier if he hadn't left an additional 31 points worth of receivers on the bench. Um, there wasn't a whole lot more Luke could have done. He basically played his best lineup, but he'll definitely be worried about his wide receiver room, with Debo being out for a few weeks and Amon Ra being a bit banged up. Should Josh be on fraud watch, ladies and gentlemen? He started Alave and Hill at wide receiver um, and left Ridley and Smith and Jeebar on the bench. I personally don't think he should be on fraud watch. Um, I think 
based on what you expect from them players, he probably made the right decision. There's an argument to be made for Ridley over Alave, although I'd be fuming if I've played Alave against Dallas and he's only managed to get 12 points with that kind of scoreline, personally. Um, it's just a little thing from me. Dobbins being in, in his flex um, and scoring more points than his actual running back, I find incredibly disrespectful. Um, but other than that, really good week. But yeah, 85 points on his bench. Insane. 20 points there, 20 points there, 20 points there. Big upgrade to be made if he would have gone for Derek Carr over Dak Prescott. Um, but then over here, there's really not a lot Luke could have done. Like, if we're saying best lineups here, he would have lost. Now, if he'd have played Lawrence and Stevenson instead of Jones and Goff, he would have won. But if we're allowing ourselves to make changes after the fact, Josh would, Josh would have still won because he'd have scored more points. I don't think it was insane to choose Goff over Lawrence. Um, Stevenson over Jones, I think, might have been maybe a smarter decision um, just because you wouldn't expect someone to necessarily run that well against the 49ers defence. But I don't think that's as outrageous as some mistakes we've seen this week. Kamara, cough, cough. Um, but let's move on to the next game. Next up, Wag handed Mick a tidy beating at 119 to 107. No points really left on the bench from either side. However, Wag will certainly be concerned about Pacheco's injury. And if, if this isn't the theme of the week, I don't know what is. Injuries to big name players left, right and centre, it seems. I seem to have come off relatively uns unscathed, touch wood. But a lot of people are definitely panicking to the waiver wires to work out what they can get. We might see if we can pull off some trades to try and capitalise on the situation. Um, but Kyler Murray with a huge week. Montgomery really good. Pacheco really good, despite getting hurt. Again, another recurring theme. Wide receiver room left a lot to be desired with only six points coming there. Um, Kincaid, solid tight end performance. You love that from your flex, 17.4. Mason was a great pickup from him. 15 points from the Dallas kicker and 11 points from the Chiefs defense. You're pretty happy. But yeah, look, 43 points on the bench, really not a lot. I don't think he actually could upgrade at any single position. Um, He could have started Robinson at wide receiver instead of Tank Dell, and that would have seen some points. Um, But that would have been it. So not really too much you can do there, unfortunately. Um, But on the other side, Mick... Daniel Jones, uh, not Daniel Jones, Jaden Daniels, um, pretty poor. Gus Edwards, pretty poor. Gibbs, really good. One of the better wide receiver rooms we've seen this week um, with Diggs and Wilson getting up there, but still not what you want. You want to be looking to like that mid-20s to early 30s for your wide receiver room every week. Only 17 points is a little bit concerning. Um, huge from Zach Ertz at tight end. Your flex scoring your 26 points is major. Um Nine points from your kicker seems low this season. Um, the Ravens' defense only getting seven points makes a bit of a difference there as well. But again, no points. No points on his bench. 30 points. Kirk Cousins, he could have played for an extra four points. Uh, but that's literally it. Dubes, I don't... Dubes would have made a slight improvement. So there was an extra, what, six points to be made here? Um Really, really not great. Lots of people hurt. And Joker, Moster, Chubb. Mick probably needs to make some big changes to his roster if he wants to try and stay in it for the rest of the season. Next up, Joshua gave George a thorough baiting in his 138-0 uh, to 100 win, and George will no doubt be livid with his very solid on paper roster massively underperforming, with superstar wide receivers Ayuk and Chase only managing 15.8 points between them. However, Joshua's win streak is in danger with the news of Cooper Cup's injury. So let's have a little look here um, about what we're dealing with. So yeah, big, big win for Joshua. Um, George will undoubtedly be very unhappy though with Ayuk and Chase scoring so poorly. The, the hot start wide receiver failing to kick it again. And it's just, it's rough. When you've left Cook on your bench, you're going to be angry. This game was winnable, I think. I think this game was incredibly winnable. Um, he's got a little bit unlucky with Mixon's injury. But actually, I don't even know if it was winnable. Williams and Cook 
could have brought Cook in for Worthy for an extra 24 points, and then he could have bought um, Williams in. So that would have been an extra 7, 24, 31. Still wouldn't have been enough. He was kind of doomed from the get-go here. Um, a really solid-looking um, managerial know-how from Joshua here. Doesn't look like he's left any points on the bench. And um, he left three on the bench, it would seem, with um, Cooper Cup. But again, getting hurt, there's not a lot you can do. But he's definitely going to be worried about losing Cooper Cup because a lot of people, I would say, slightly overperformed expectations here. Um, so you're going to need to find a way to make up them points in other ways down the stretch of the season. Of course, he would have done better without the Cowboys' defense costing him points. Next up, Oscar will be very happy to bounce back from his 0-1 start with a big win this week against Cameron um, and his squad that is very, very injured. It's um, it's an interesting one for sure um, with Walker, White, Jefferson, Engram, Hollywood Brown and Puka Nakua all having designations and missing some, if not all, of their games this week. I don't think he checked his lineup because a couple of these he knew weren't going to start at all. Um, but still, you really hate to see it. This team is one of the most beaten up teams in football right now. Puka Nakura and Brown both on IR, meaning he has no oh he has one wide receiver on his bench. Um and now with Jefferson being a little bit hurt, apparently she's to Bruce, we should be fine. Um Walker missing the game, Engram missing the game. It's a miracle he scored 78 points. If not for that Justin Jefferson and Drake London performance netting in 40 points, this could have been a really embarrassing loss. Um, but it doesn't, again, it looks like we've had some really good decision making here because it doesn't really look like any points left on the bench here. Um, Wilson could have not started in place of Williams or Eckler, but other than that, pretty, pretty solid. Um, you really do have to ask though, did he get let off mage style with that Kamara? Because take them 44 points off, say he scores 20. It still wins by 20 points. Doesn't really make any difference, does it? Um, Kamara's huge week, though, definitely pads this scoreline and makes it look a lot, lot better. And then to close out this week, you had the Battle of the Mids. 84 plays 82. Really close game, but a very, very low-scoring game with Ian and Tony. So, you look at this team and you're like, where did it all go wrong? And then you see 12 points there. 11 points there, 5, less than 1. Metcalf, huge. Metcalf won this game basically single-handedly. Kelsey, 1. Johnson, that. When you're second, or not second, when you're one of your highest scorers is your kicker, you know there's a problem. Um, yeah, Mahomes not even breaking 13 is a big concern. Hubbard being a top-scoring running back with 11.6 is a concern. You might ask yourself, where are his running backs? Well, you see, he picked up Christian McCaffrey. He picked up Christian McCaffrey, the number one overall pick, and now he's on IR. Um, and as a result of that, he's struggling. He also took Pat Mahomes in like the third round, so he's being punished for his poor drafting. Um, and then over here, I mean, what, what went wrong? Jackson, 16 points. Derek Henry, 16 points. Okay, a little bit poor there, but that's fine. That's, that's Christian Kirk dealt with. Seven points there, 20 points there. His tight end won. His flex won. His kicker just... I, I don't understand how he's lost this game. I'm looking at these scores compared to these. And it just doesn't seem to add up. The worst bit is there wasn't really a lot else he could do. He could have taken McGoughlin out for Dordle. And, that, and he would have won the game. Or he could have played Thomas instead of Waddle. But like, even combined, even if they're allowed to play their benches, they barely break 110 points. Really, really low scoring game. Um, and I'm sure both of them will be in a rush to forget about what happened this week. But the big take big takeaways this week are absolutely lots of injuries to big players. Wide receivers are not scoring many points at the minute due to the passing game being on the downturn. You want to find what you want to find running backs, stash them, pad out some running back room, and then trade them away for the few wide receivers that are playing well in a couple of weeks' time. That's it from me this week. I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.